Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to my messy garage. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on installing topo maps on my Garmin GPS. Towards the end of that video, I made a promise to you guys that I was going to show you how I mounted it to my snow machine. And we will get to that. This is the bracket from my snow machine. You'll notice that it's got a hummingbird gimbal mount attached to it. First thing we're going to do is another chart plotter project. We've got the Hummingbird Helix 5 and light's not real great but there we go and we have to remove that bracket or that we have to remove that gimbal from the mounting plate so that the mounting plate can be used for the Garmin and I got another idea to use the Helix 5 for. We're going to work on that first and then we'll get to mounting the Garmin on the snow machine. Follow along if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave a comment. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. So about a week ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a very avid ice fisherman, uh, a lot more so than I am, and was bouncing ideas off of him about how I could mount the uh, hummingbird to use with the ice fishing transducer that I have. Uh, I had just had this mounted on the snow machine handlebars and hung the transducer off the side. But I wanted something a little more port portable and he suggested getting a Vexlar Gens Blue Box. I'd never heard of one before but I looked it up online and uh, ordered one in. So we have a box here. Goes together with some screws. Battery fits down into the back here. Set that aside for now. Obviously the aluminum bracket will have to come off. And mount that onto the box. Matter of fact, I even got Vexlar branded bag that goes over it. So now what we need to do is figure out how we go about mounting this. Unfortunately, as you can see, there's a hole here and the holes for the gimbal line up perfectly with that. I could just use this bracket, a couple of screws and it would be mounted. But as I say, this is the bracket that I want to use on the snow machine. So let me disconnect the bracket from the gimbal mount and I'll bring you guys one back when we're done. So here we are, we've got the uh, Hummingbird gimbal mount extracted. And as you can see, the holes line up perfect with this slot in the base. So that's not gonna work. Uh, if I was mounting a Vexlar unit in here, they actually have pre-drilled holes that you can use to put screws through. Unfortunately, it's not going to work. However, I have seen guys on YouTube talk about doing something along those lines. There we go, that looks better. Put it down fairly low and tilt back. But I think maybe what we should do is stick this thing together, kind of, sort of, and put it in the bag and see how that looks because ultimately that's what we're going to be concerned about how this unit looks like when it's covered with the nice insulated bag we'll just take a couple of screws and temporarily stick this together Essentially, the unit slides in from the back.
Now we'll take the hummingbird. That looks just about perfect. We slide it over to a little bit so we can get at the buttons on the side. Again, this bag is not designed for use with the Helix 5, but it does seem to work. Now, for the tricky part, extracting this from the bag and hanging on to the gimbal of the unit so that we don't lose our position. Okay, that looks like it'll work. Since I don't really want to draw on the plastic, the Sharpie marker. And I want to try and locate where this is going to be. I figure we'll just use a post-it note for now. So we want it down from the top by mm, five eighths of an inch or, you know, a little over a centimeter. We want this edge to line up reasonably well with this edge so that we bring... I haven't got enough hands to show you on the bag, but basically we want to bring it over so that the uh, controls for the unit are as uh, much in the open window as possible. will hopefully give us decent enough alignment. Don't tell anybody, but I was using aircraft hardware to hold this thing together. So since that's AN3, I know that's a 3 16 bolt that we need, or 3 16 hole that we need drilled in there. Let's get this back off to make things a little easier to, to drill. Those back in the bags so when I'm losing because I don't have anything that, like that kicking around. We'll lay that down on the back, kind of line the gimbal up. Does that look straight to you? Okay. Drill that one. Then we can kind of see how things are going to be. That looks pretty good, but before we get too carried away, let's throw the second hole in it. That looks straight to me. and three hardware 
means that it is uh, 3 sixteenths in diameter. It happens to use a 3 eighths wrench. So there are two of the four screws. And we'll stick it in the bag and see how it works. I don't know about you, but I like that. Okay, two more screws. Imagine that. I don't think I even drilled into the uh, desktop. Prior to uh, getting the great idea of picking up this gen box, my uh, plan A was to use a plastic ammo container, an appropriate size battery, and mount the gimbal on the top of the box. I like this Vexlar setup much better. Fortunately, when I picked up the battery, I got lucky and just happened to pick up the size that fits in the Gens box perfectly. I do have somewheres in my mess a spare power cord for the uh, Hummingbird. However, off the top of my head, I don't know where it is. I do, however, know that the one that is attached to the snow machine needs to come off. So that is what I will plan on using. For now, I think, yeah, we can get the top of the battery easily enough. We'll put the screws into this and we'll see what it looks like when it's all in the bag. Short ones go in the top, long ones go in the bottom. You can see there's not a whole lot of distance here, whereas there's lots of distance there. There we are. That's step one and step one and a half. We got this off. For the next step, we need to set up this bracket to work with the gimbal for the Garmin. While I could fairly easily whip up a new bracket, and I may have to um, if this doesn't clear the handlebars very well, I'm thinking mounting this on this bracket kind of sort of like that. Then this mounts to this pivot point and I can turn this uh, side to side. I do plan on picking up an ice fishing transducer for the Garmin at some point. Not immediately though. So let's get step two sorted out. Now one thing I want to be very or fairly careful of is um, I don't want this to be halfway between two notches. I want it so that when the screw holes go through, this is sitting straight. And it appears that lining this notch up with this notch should work just fine. This is just an awl. Aluminum is fairly soft, so pushing it through like that should do fairly well. And I have some smallish metric stainless bolts that should be long enough to go through there. Scrap of wood from the garage. Those holes do not look straight. Well, not the highest quality drill bit in the world, but it did the job. This isn't permanently bolting it together. Um, the piece is going to have to come off of the aluminum 
because I have to deburr the aluminum. Let me grab a wrench so it'll fit on that. Hopefully, I have one in my kit. Not a wrench, but I do have a ratchet and socket that will do nicely. Okay, we get that snugged up. Now, I don't know if you can see that down in there with the lighting I got going on, but the one hole is pretty close. The other one, however, wasn't. Finish drilling those holes and deburr everything. There are many ways to deburr holes, but simple is just take a larger drill bit. You can see how there's kind of a sharp edge there and a little spin. If this were structural on an airplane, we wouldn't want to spin it like that because, as you can see, we're putting a little bit of a chamfer on the hole. But since we're just holding a tarp plotter on a snow machine, I think we'll get away with it. Okay, here we are. We got a nut and a screw. This is fitted for the nut. Kind of jams down in the bottom. Now, we can put these screws in. Here we are, good and snug. Take this. No, I'm not sure if I want it so that it takes the GPS back or if it pulls the GPS forward. I think we'll go with back for now. This goes down through the hole. Snugs up. There we go. Now we take the quick release. I think we can get rid of the protective plastic. And there we go, we're ready for this. We're ready for the GPS. Let me go grab it, it's in the kitchen. So there we go, that is going to mount to mirror mounts that are attached to the handlebar on my snow machine. For cable management on the back, we have a little cover, clips in place. That pops up out of there. The power cable, I forget which side it goes in, power cable and transducer cable goes in and then this little clip goes down over top, keeps the cables from popping back out and looks after cable management. However, on the SeaDoo first ride that I did, after getting this installed, this little cover went whoop over my shoulder. So we got a new one with this holder and hopefully we won't lose it. To be honest, losing it didn't make any difference. I didn't ever once have the cable come unplugged on the sea and I was taking it over some pretty rough water. So it shouldn't be a problem, but it's always good to keep that sort of thing attached. Anyways, I'm gonna call it here for tonight. Uh, I keep going, the video is not done yet. Next thing we're gonna do is extract the wiring harness from the Skidoo for the Helix 5 so that I can finish putting together the Gens box and I'm going to mount this to the snow machine. And final stage, we will hook up power to the Helix 5 and you can see it powered up as well. Anyways, we'll see you in the next part. So here we are guys, uh, where I keep my snow machine stored. Sorry if the lighting's not the greatest and if the sound's not the greatest because this building is an echo chamber and it absolutely eats light. So this is my 2019 
Skidoo Expedition Super Wide Track, 24 inch wide track. Absolutely amazing machine out in the deep snow. Does a phenomenal job. Thoroughly enjoy riding it. We've got the uh, Garmin that we're gonna mount. And yes, it does look like it sticks up quite obnoxiously, but when you're seated on the machine, your head is high enough that you don't have any trouble seeing around the screen in front of you. So, a couple things we've got to do here. We've got to obviously mount the bracket back on the mirror mounts that I have attached to handlebars. There's a couple little tabs we've got to push in at the top, pops the gauge pod out. And from there, we need to extract the Humminbird wiring harness. And we need to run the wiring harness for the Garmin. So let me get you popped in a tripod here so that you can kind of see what's going on. And uh, I'll bring you back in a minute. Hopefully that gives a uh, good angle. Looks like the battery's getting a little low on this camera. Hopefully it doesn't kick out on me. To get the gauge pot out, we need a small bladed screwdriver. Goes down into the notch. A little lock in there that we have to push down on. And then the pod pops out. Now the reason we're doing this is we need to get into this little bundle of joy that is the mount for the Montana what will be the wiring harness for the Garmin. Tie wrap on the back of the steering. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, since it is a little bit of a challenge to get the wire down through that uh, fairing, I'm going to tape this to the end of the Humminbird and use it kind of like a leader or a fish tape. Pull the uh, new harness in as I pull out the old one. And there is the Garmin wearing harness. Now if you're asking the question why it's important to use the cable in behind the instrument pod here for hooking up the GPS, it's because the cigarette lighter or accessory port that is on the dash of the snow machine doesn't have power all the time. Um, Skidoo set these machines up so that they don't have a whole bunch of accessory load on the alternator when there's no revolutions in the engine. So you don't have accessory power until you get up over, and I forget what the, uh, the number is, but there's a certain RPM that you've got to get over before you get um, any accessory power. When I first hooked this up, hooked up the, uh, the Helix on here, I did just have it temporarily hooked into the cigarette lighter, and the unit would power off as soon as you let off on the throttle. So definitely they have a set of plugs in behind that are specifically labeled GPS power. There is there is an accessory glove box or something that you can get. I think it mounts up in here that the Garmin Montana was supposed to go into, but given the size of the screen, having it up a little closer to my nose is a good idea. So what do we need here? We need to put a a male spade on the ground wire and we need to put oh, likewise a male spade on the positive as well. That will hopefully keep the worst of the snow out of the electrical connectors. Now this plug is designed for use on water so you'd think it would be fairly waterproof. Pretty well we're done in behind the uh, the instrument pod here will need to bundle everything up and throw a couple of tie wraps on it and uh, put it back in place. 
But for now, what the next step I want to do is mount the actual unit. There we go, the unit is mounted. Power goes into the power connector. Imagine that. And then the clip goes back down. Connects up. Okay, you see we've got Garmin came up, or the uh, Montana came up, and the Echo Map is coming up. We bundle up the collection wires. Feed the instrument pod back down in place. Tie wrap on there so that we can keep the cables. Okay, I'm having battery issues today. The lights aren't cooperating and the camera just died. I'm not sure uh, where it kicked out. So uh, you can see we got the instrument pod back in there. I coiled up the wires, tie wrap around the cable just to keep it kind of managed. We've got it fired up here on the uh, snow machine. We've got the Montana is working well as working as well. So I'm holding the phone approximately right in front of my face. So this is my field of view when uh, going down the lake. So as you can see, although the unit is quite large sticking up off the handlebars, it is well below my field of view and doesn't get along really well with looking at the uh, instrument panel in behind. But let's face it, you're more interested in the GPS speed that you're going to have on the two GPS units than you are in what the speedometer on the dash says. Anyways, this pretty well wraps up our installation in this echo chamber black hole of a building. And uh, I'll take you back to my regular little workshop and we'll finish putting together that ice fishing unit on the Helix 5 now that I have the wiring harness and the ice transducer. See you in a bit. Well guys, here we are back in the uh, little workshop I have on my back porch. And here is the battery that we need to hook up to. I got some nice silicone wire kicking around from another project. Got some crimp on terminals. Got a little power connector. And this cable here is connected up to a 12 volt battery charger. We need to identify which is the positive and which is the negative. So red probe is of course positive, black is negative. Put the red on the exposed wire. Given that we've got a fuse on the unprotected side of this, and this is surrounded, I'm going to guess the fuse is probably the positive. We will make absolutely sure of that before we do any charging. So our first step is we're going to strip back some wire off of these and put on some crimp connectors. I think we're going to go with blue ones. Uh, they look like they will fit nicer on the silicone wire as opposed to red. Color code designates the size of wire it's designed to take. This is for uh, 22 to 16 wire gauge. I don't know what that would be um, in metric. Seems strange that we don't use metric in Canada, but we go with AWG. I have nice shielded blue terminals. We'll use these. The silicone wire is about the right size so that it completely fills 
the back side of the crimp connector. We take our ratcheting crimper, give the wire a good crimp, and we give it a little pull, and it is on there. So there's our negative lead. Do that again for the positive. Keep twisting, and eventually it works its way in there. There we go. Crimper. So there's a positive lead and our negative lead. This is where we're gonna start from. The next one we're gonna to go to is a multi-wire connector. And what we're gonna do is come in uh, with the silicone wire. And at the other end, we're going to have our charge lead and the wiring harness for the Helix 5. So there we are. Those are ready for some shrinking. Now, because we want our two leads to be about the same length, we'll cut the red off there. Now, because the uh, this doesn't have a good tight fit and it isn't a heat shrink style fitting, we'll take a piece of heat shrink tubing and we'll slide it down over the length of the connector. We take our fuse, put it in the other end. shrink on it. Let me run the uh, heat gun on these, shrink them all down, and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, here we are. We got it all shrunk down nice. This is the, uh, these connectors have the nice glue in them. Seals it everything, seals everything up uh, watertight or water resistant. This is just normal heat shrink. It doesn't seal watertight. It's not perfect, but it will do. So now we're going to take and we're going to put tie wrap hold everything stable at this end. Get nice and tight. We'll hook the positive lead up and the negative lead. Unfortunately, this battery support kind of comes in here and holds the uh, connector in place. So now we run the cable through. We'll run the transducer cable in through the back. It gets plugged in. I wrap the transducer and power wire together just for cable management purposes. And now I will bundle the rest of this up. We don't want to bundle up the transducer wire with that, but It help if we put a fuse in. I figure seven and a half amp should be more than enough. Um, drop a couple in the bottom. And there we are. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And for more great content from Doug's Messy Garage, select the video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching.